in that team we said is such a great team. He's filling the boots of uh, uh, Juan Mir next season, which is going to be some very tough boots to fill, isn't it? Yes, also this season he has moved to, uh, for, to, to a great team, but he didn't get along with, and now he's moving again. He has been there in Moto3 for quite some time now. Uh, he was a promising, and then uh, he never turned out uh, to be world champion. So let's see next year. All right, we have Michael Musel on the grid right now. Let's see who he's caught up with. Okay, we're down here with Adam Norodin. He qualified in 15th place. He did fantastically in the warm-up session. We are in the home ground of the Malaysian International Circuit. So, Adam Norodin, what are your expectations for today? This is your home race. You've done very well in the warm-up. What, what are you expecting in this race? Yeah, for sure, expe uh, expectation uh, was really high, you know, from the home ground. For sure, I'm going to do my best and uh, try to, to get uh, the best position uh, that I can get, you know, in, the, in here. So, yeah, uh, I will do my best and uh, let's see what's going to happen. Thanks. Thank you very much for talking to us. Good luck. Yeah, Adam Norodin will want to be impressing in front of his home crowd as we see the safety car going around. Five minutes to race start. Matteo Guadagnini, who's your podium for Moto3? I say Mir for sure and uh, uh, probably uh, Loy and Fenati let's see okay that would be a great podium for yeah. Loy wouldn't it all right we're going to go for a short break after which we'll get you down to Sapan for the first race of the day it is Moto3 in round 17 of the MotoGP World Championship these days there are many places to stay but how can you avoid nasty surprises? With AccorHotels.com, you'll always make the right choice at a guaranteed best price. As a true online hotel company, we feature not only our own hotels, but hotels from our partners too. Your stay is sure to exceed your expectations. Book now on AccorHotels.com. AccorHotels.com. Feel welcome from the first click. There's more than one way to experience the thrill of racing. Oh, that's going to be a red flag! Oh no, massive crash there! So rev up and get into gear with the Formula 2 Championship on the Fox Sports Network. So Joan Mir has already wrapped up the 2017 Moto3 World Championship, but amazingly he starts from pole position for the first time in his championship season. He's ahead on that front row of Jorge Martin and John McPhee. Ben Schneider, Rodrigo and Livio Loy. The season best for Loy on row two. Fanati, Bastianini and Jules Danilo penalised three places on row three. And finally, the Gian Antonio and Canet, a star-studded row four. Suzuki, Sasaki and Norodin. Bit of a Far Eastern flavour on row five. Buliga, Ramirez and Guevara on row six. Row seven, headed by Andrea Migno, Manuel Pagliani and Keita Toba. Cornfile, Dalla Porta and Philip Hurtle struggling this weekend down in 24th. Binder, Basecki and Atarat Puvipat make up row nine. Arbolino, the wild card, Kazmi Yadin and Patrick Pulkin in there on row 10. And Maria Herrera continuing to deputise for the injured Albert Arenas on the Aspar Mahindra. She completes the field on row 11. So the riders then wait to head off on their warm-up lap. We heard from Chul Danilo who said he was opting for medium rubber. He thinks it lasts the distance well. This morning in warm-up, Juan Mir, the championship leader, tried out a soft rear to see how he fancied it today. What's he gone for, Dylan? Well, he was, uh, he was trying to trick us all because he did actually go to the grid with a brand new soft option tyre. However, he did decide to switch to the medium. Basically, we have almost a whole grid on medium mediums we have Tony Arbolino, Tatsuki Suzuki, Marco Pesecchi and Jakob Kornfall those are the only guys to have opted for the soft option rear tyre yeah temperatures on the rise here in Sabang so I'm not surprised that some of those frontrunners didn't think that the soft was going to maybe give them the optimum grip towards the, the end of the race I guess guys like Pesecchi and Tatsuki Suzuki way down the grid feel like they've got absolutely nothing to lose it's not like they're gonna have to uh, wait for those media tyres to come in when we've got ambient temperatures of around 35 degrees Stephen, ground temperatures of close to 45 degrees 
warming your tyres up. Never an issue here in Malaysia. No, not really a huge problem, is it, here in this part of the world? So, Matt, with Mir and Martin looking so dominant this weekend, I mean, Malaysia always lends itself to good racing with the two massive slipstreaming opportunities, but if you were to be putting your money anywhere at the moment, Mir and Martin look like the favourites, although, of course, yeah. based on history and recent history in particular, it has to be Mir, the solid favourite, because Martin has yet to win a race. Yeah, Mir, standout favourite for me, Steve. Got to hope, really, that those two long strikes keep that lead group pretty bunched together in the slipstream because what we've seen in qualifying yesterday and it's certainly in the warmth this morning if they can make a break Mir and Martin have got the upper hand they've got far the better pace than anybody else in the field for the spectacle we hope that a few of those guys behind the likes of McPhee, Ben Schneider, and Rodrigo's can make a bit of a race but they've got to get away well and keep in the slipstream because on the pace of the last two sessions Mir and Martin could quite easily clear off into the distance here a number of riders to keep your eyes on from further back on the grid. It's a wide, long track here, so there is plenty of opportunity to make up for lost time if you didn't have a good day at the office yesterday in qualifying. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the progress of Marcos Ramirez, him being one of those guys to keep a close eye on. That Platinum Bay Real Estate KTM had a good warm up session. His qualifying compromised by a real heavy crash at turn number 15 when he was actually running pretty well. So he's got work to do from 17th place, but with the slipstream, expect to see Ramirez on an early charge. It's 19 races now since a rider's won a race from pole position. Now the last time we had a run similar to this was last year. The rider to end that run was Chuan Mir. Pole, as Matt said earlier, and the race winner in Austria. Is he about to end the current run again? You wouldn't bet against it. This young man is breaking records left, right and centre. And he's looking to try and equal that man's record. On the right there, Valentino Rossi of getting 11 lightweight class victories in this class here this season. So like Jack Miller and Valentino Rossi having a pre-MotoGP race discussion about rear grip from those Michelin tyres. Didn't look like Jack Miller had a lot of rear grip in the warm session this morning, did he? <laughs> Nice to see them both having a chat though and of course keeping an eye on a championship they know and love. Valentino Rossi with a lot of interest with riders from his academy in it. Jack Miller of course a former runner up in the championship. We're ready to go here. Look for the lights top left corner. The Malaysian Grand Prix is underway. Away we go. Good start from Juan Mir on pole position. Pretty much everyone got away okay but Jorge Martin absolutely flying. Number 88 on the Del Conca Grassini Honda. Looks like he'll get the whole shot. Ben Snyder's in the mix as well. Livio Lloyd just floating through. Mir's got the wide line but it's Martin with the whole shot and Rodrigo super aggressive up the inside of Livio Loy Rodrigo's already picked up a couple of places yeah Mir got swamped on that run down to the first one Rodrigo gets barged out wide it may have been a touch from Bastianini but all the places that Rodrigo gained he's quickly lost a bit of a twitch from the rear end there for Juan Mir on the exit of turn two as well so McPhee goes back through on him again but Jorge Martin here looking to clear off already look at the gap he's got over the rest of the field Martin leads from Ben Snyder and now Mir up the inside of McPhee yeah Mir will know exactly the pace that Jorge Martin's got he will not want this to happen Martin the only risk going gung-ho like this at the start of the race I suppose is could he burn up his tyres very very quickly but he's already opened up an advantage through sector one alone of close to eight tenths of a second he is the one lap wonder in Moto3 stonking time then from uh, sorry stonking start then for Jorge Martin desperate to try and finally find that first win in this class he's in another race already Steve we're about to come down to turn number nine for the first time. He's already a second faster as Rodrigo again looks up the inside of Livio Loy. No way through this time around. The Gian Antonio picks up Adam Norodine at turn nine. I was about to say Adam Norodine had got a really good start to the race actually up inside the top ten. But yeah, that's just halted his progress somewhat. There is Livio Loy just up ahead of Gabriel Rodrigo and Anaya Bastianini. But here is Jorge Martin, then nine tenths clear of Bo Ben Snyder as he makes his way through sector three. What will it be now? Has he managed to pull over a second? He has 1.1 seconds in sector three on the opening lap. Sensational stuff from Jorge Martin. Then Romano Finati and Aaron Canet have had poor starts to this race. In fact, Finati, he's down in 13th. He's lost six places already on this opening lap. Finati, not what he was expecting at all. This is on board here with the Canet looking back at Romano. So into turn 15 we go, and it's last of the late breakers there for Fanati. Oh, massive, massive Suzuki. clash from Hector Suzuki. Suzuki, how on earth he's just got up and walking away from that? Well, just got up nonchalantly, like nothing's happened. He just went up and kissed the sun there at turn number 15. He's got up walking away like nothing's happened. Martin's over the line with an unbelievable advantage of 1.1 seconds. 
at the start of lap number two. It's Mir that's now leading the chasing pack. Mir got up the inside of Bo Benschneider. Massive crash though for Tatsuki Suzuki. There was contact between him and Fanati at the final corner. I can't believe that Suzuki just got to his feet. Like nothing had happened, like he was in a forward roll in the gym. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I've never seen anything like that. I mean, you would pack up and go home, wouldn't you, after something like that? There's changes here as well for Livio Loy. He's moved up to join his teammate. Bo Ben Snyder just falling back here on this second lap by place by place. He's now back to seventh place overall. Juan Frank Rivera did a re good recovery job, Steve, because he got up to 14th place that first lap from 18th. At the top of the picture on the start, he had an absolute shocking start. Huge wheelie as he came off the line. Tatsuki Suzuki's right is over very very quickly oh, oh watch this He's speedway hit the sky you probably go out of shot here Fanati needs to go and buy himself a lottery ticket really quick speedway style from Tatsuki Suzuki what's that 10 feet 11 feet in the air it looks like he's gonna land on Fanati Superman from Tatsuki Suzuki oh this is gonna be a bone cruncher oh somehow he doesn't whack his head either does he has he been practicing the old gymnastics, Tatsuki Suzuki? I'm just pleased to see that he's okay, but his race is over, I'm afraid. Well, the soles of his boots got sunburnt there. I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. In the meantime, Martin is really, really stretching out now. Juan Mir is in the place he wants to be. Can he reel in Jorge Martin? Because at the moment, Martin is doing a good job of completely and utterly uh, decimating the field. Here he is. He's one and a half seconds up as they make their way down the back straight with Mir the champion in second, then Livio Lloyd, Gabriel Rodrigo and John McPhee now in his slipstream. Qualifying has shown us this year, Steve, with eight pole positions already, Jack Duat, Jorge Martin, when he has got clear track, he can be invincible, he can be quite brilliant. They might have already let him get away by too much of an advantage here. It's going to be one and a half seconds. Livio Lloyd has a good long look over his left shoulder. A 2.12.942 by Jorge Martin. That has absolutely smashed Brad Binder's race record a 213.571 he's six tenths inside the race record on the second lap incredible stuff here it's hard to believe he's never picked up a race win isn't it when he's in form like this Jorge Martin and you just get the feeling Matt and I think we have done all year that once he gets that first victory it's going to be the first of many well he's put himself in prime position here to break that victory duck he is just streaking away blowing away the field here so far in Sepang He's one and a half seconds clear now as they come through the first sector on lap three. One man exhibition from Martin so far. Yeah, he will never get a better opportunity than what he's got in front of him right now. And this is really important for the team to try and ensure that they give him the correct information of what's going on behind as well. But there's nobody better than him on a Saturday afternoon and at the moment there's no one touching him here on Sunday right. Bastianini up the inside of Gabriel Rodrigo Dylan guys a quick word uh, Tatsuki Suzuki obviously made it back to the pits he's given us the thumbs up he is okay the reason he also couldn't continue was was that his right foot back had snapped off here's Gabriel Rodrigo he's been pretty, pretty feisty down the brakes in the turn number nine Adam Noradin's done pretty well to shake off the attention of Fabio De Gianantonio we saw them have close contact at turn number nine a couple of laps to go well Noradin has regained his composure, he's up into 8th place again as the Malaysian. Can't get any better than this, can it, for Adam Norodine in front of this crowd. Almost 100,000 people expected here. What's going on with the likes of Kinnett and Fanati? 12th and 14th respectively, showing nothing at all to threaten the podium here in this Malaysian Grand Prix. And Philip Hurtle, who's scored points in the last 11 races, he's down in 23rd at the moment. Yeah, that's a head-scratcher. Cannot work out what's happened to Philip Hurtle here this weekend. On board here with Danea Bastianini, then. Australia Galizia Honda rider now trying to pull out of the slipstream of John McPhee. Livio Loy thought about a move on his world champion teammate there, and unfortunately the after-effect means that John McPhee's been pumped wide a bit as well. Nobody's really... Loy and Mir are doing the right thing here, Steve. They're not carving each other up. They're not blocking each other and potentially losing crucial ground to Martin. Yeah. Nora Dean's lap time, Matt, a 2 Slipstream. 7 Slipstream, Steve. He's in prime position on the back straight and the home straight. So, Jorge Martin and the lap record for exactly one lap. Adam Norodin, a bit of home glory for him there. Crucial, that slipstream. We heard yesterday it can be on the two straights worth almost eight tenths of a second. If Noradine finds a podium here today, this place will absolutely Ooh. erupt. Farmy Carradine, five years ago, 
almost won the Malaysian Grand Prix in Moto3. He was mugged at the final corner by Sandra Cortese. Norodin's got up the inside brilliantly of John McPhee on that run up to turn number four. He's picked up another place. He's into fifth. Yeah, it's an absolute Honda fest here at the moment. Gabriel Rodrigo, the only rider inside the top eight that is a non-Honda machine. There he is on that KTM. So Martin, long gone. He's probably about to click sector two, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him two seconds clear. Actually, they've just, the chasing pack have just gnawed away a little bit at that advantage. It was 1.9 seconds through sector one on this fourth lap around. Mir has just taken a couple of tenths back. The bad news for Juan Mir is that his teammate isn't uh, his wingman any longer. We ride now through turn nine, and they're now Bastianini's hunting him down. Yeah, for Livio Loy now, it's definitely a case of every man for himself. He rode brilliantly as Mir's wingman in Phillip Island last weekend, but this man trying to find a contract, Loy. He will be desperate to get another podium finish. Does not deserve, really, based on recent form, to be dumped out of that team. And I reckon there might be a few people who are actually regretting the decisions that have been made. But hey, it's done now. Dallaporta will take the seat next year. Bastianini at the moment getting a good close look at the bike that he'll ride next year of course he takes place of uh, Joanne Mir down the back straight we go still 1.7 seconds the gap so it's been managed at the moment but they have as Matt says just taken a couple of tenths out of him McPhee fights back then on Norodin at turn number 15 run wide yeah but a chatter as well on the front end for John McPhee on the brakes into that final corner yeah he ran wide Norodin pouncing straight back then so Martin over the line to complete lap four Mir was the faster man last time around by another couple of tenths. The gap's come down to, well, it stays at 1.7 seconds. Bastianini here having a look up the inside of Joanne Mir. Doesn't quite work out for him. Darren Binder's crashed out of the race. The South African just has not got going since returning from injury. And unfortunately for him, that's game over. He might just rejoin the race, but there'll be no points on offer for him. Uh, since he came back from that broken thumb in the summer break, no points now in four races for Binder. That three riders chasing Martin, Mir, Bastianini and Livio Loya just threatening to maybe break away from Norodin in fifth. Adam Norodin's going to have to get a couple of real hot laps in here to make sure he goes with those three riders in front of him. The best he can hope for is that Bastianini engages just to try and drag the chasing pack closer. The gap 1.6, so it's another tenth taken out of Jorge Martin, but he's still well in control of this one. Credit to Antonelli, he's still inside the top 10. Ben Snyder, having been second earlier on, is uh, down in ninth at the moment. The Gian Antonio is worth keeping an eye on, always in the dry in conditions like this, number 21. The Beast has got his claws out today, hasn't he? Bastianini, he's having a great ride there, hounding and harassing Juan Mir. Still can't find their way through into second place right now. But he's certainly not uh, giving Mir an easy time. This is actually sensible riding if you can be sensible in a Moto3 front chasing pack from those group chasing Martin they're not carving each other up they're not cutting each other's lap times no, but then Mir is notoriously difficult to get past isn't he yeah well he's, he's so good on the brakes he's so good on the slip he's like, so good on the straights he's so aerodynamic it's really hard to find a way to slipstream Juan Mir that's His body positions absolutely picture perfect let's also bear in mind that Bastianini will want to make a move pretty clean he doesn't want to enter this team next year um, on the back on the back of having wiped Juan yep. Mir out. Norodin has got through again on McPhee but by maintaining it uh, fairly calm and calculated so far in this group they're not giving Martin the chance to break away in fact they've taken another two tenths out of Martin last time around the gaps come down to one and a half seconds is Bastianini going to fight up the inside of Mir on the brakes in the turn one he got good slipstream he's not going to be close enough again in that planted front end of Juan Mir, it's rock solid, it's like granite, isn't it? That Dunlop front tyre for Juan Mir. No way through again. The black and orange colour scheme of Adam Norodin keeping this Malaysia crowd well entertained. He has bridged the gap to this three, battling for second place through sector one. It's another tenth that's been taken out of Jorge Martin's lead. It's 1.4 seconds the gap now. Still no way through into the top ten for Kinet and Fanati. The two men are in the top three in the World Championship. Livio Loy then is now through on Anaya Bastianini. He's moved up into third. Here is McPhee. Just looking at uh, an incident there between Gabriel Rodrigo and John McPhee into turn one as they clatter into each other on the start-finish straight. 
Yeah, in football, they class that as a good old-fashioned shoulder barge, but this is all happening at about 150 miles an hour down that start finish straight. The gap is coming down. Mia just chipping away quite brilliantly, ruthlessly cutting the gap down onto Jorge Martin. It's come down over the last two or three laps by two tenths every lap. And that's exactly where we're sitting right now. Mears picked up another two tenths this time around. The gap down at 1.3 seconds. Livio Lloyd's got his hands full here, holding off Adam Norodin, John McVeigh, and Gabriel Rodrigo. Joanne Mir can smell blood here. He knows that Jorge Martin hasn't won a race before, and he knows that every time he goes round and sees that that lead he's got is coming down, he's not won a race before, the butterflies will start to creep in here for Jorge Martin. The Grassini Honda rider has lost another couple of tenths there. It's now down to almost a second between Martin and Mir. It's very early on this race, but did that early blitz from Martin already abuse his tyres to the point where they're starting to move around a little bit underneath him. Livio Loy is now getting back up the inside of Bastianini. Well, he's in hot, he's run wide, he's lost a place to Bastianini. Oh, Norodin there. Huge slide on that rear tyre as he squeezed the power on coming back through turn number 15. He was pretty fortunate to stay on there. This is going to be some lap from Joan Mir. He's four tenths quicker than Jorge Martin on that lap. The gap is now down to a second. Steve, there's a crasher at the final corner. You can see Marshall's running through the gravel trap. Not quite sure who that was. Get confirmation of that for you in a moment as McPhee just goes underneath Adam Norodin. This gap really is coming down sector by sector, and Mir really is now getting on terms. It won't be long, oh, Chilton sure. Nilo. What a nightmare! He had that monster crash, didn't he, last weekend at turn 11 in Phillip Island, and his absolutely dreadful run continues then for the man who started ninth. Front end washout at turn number 15. He was chasing Aaron Kinnett. Second close call of the race for Romano Fanati. Tatsuki Suzuki launched himself into orbit at the start of the race at turn number 15 and going down right in front of Finati now is his teammate Jules Danilo. He's seen a bit of drama today, Finati. Danilo will be looking forward to the 2018 season, jumping on board a bigger bike. It's been a tough old time, hasn't it, since that summer break? Well, since that career best race in Aston, Steve, that's now just two points in the last nine Grand Prix. And when we talk about shocking runs, that's absolutely diabolical. Mir has said goodbye to this pack, chasing for third and he's now just eight tenths behind Jorge Martin. Bastianini here charging up the inside of Livio Loy, nicely done into turn nine. He moves back up into third place. Yeah, what's going through the head now for Jorge Martin? Every time he looks at his pit board for the last three or four laps, he's seen 36 plus 1.2 plus one. This time around, it could be plus 0 0.8. The gap's just coming down all the time, and he will know that Juan Mir demonstrated in qualifying yesterday and in the warm-up this morning he has got more than the pace to match Martin at the front of this race. This is what we thought may happen. The two men who dominated qualifying and the warm-up are starting to break away here and turn this into a two-horse showdown. On board now with the world champion, Juan Mir. When he's been in this position so many times before, he makes light work of it. He's having to work very hard at the moment to reel in Jorge Martin, but it's working so far. There's carnage going on here for third, though. Riders running wide, Rodrigo's up ahead of McPhee, but it's Bastianini at the moment, number 33, that has that third place. They come across the line then, 11 laps to go, and the gap is down to eight tenths. Yep, so Mia last time around again, then took three tenths out of Juan Mia. The chasing pack are really struggling to run the pace at the front. Bastianini at 2.14.0, that was well over half a second slower than Mia. The fastest man in that chasing pack was actually... Gabriel Rodrigo with a 2.13.7, that's what moved him ahead of John McPhee. These temperatures are hard to keep up with for these riders, they're almost a second slower than they were at the start of the race now. Here is Martin then, still leading, but sector by sector, he loses a chunk to the world champion, Juan Mir. Yet to pick up a race win, Jorge Martin, in 48 attempts eight podiums but too often the bridesmaid is today his day well if it is he's got to fight the best in the business yeah his last four podiums have all been third places he's in a good spot right now to make sure he's not five in a row where he finishes in third Bastianini looks like he may also be just dragging himself away from that big group following him led at the moment by Lloyd that's Rodrigo McPhee Norodine to Gian Antonio Nicolo Antonelli is leading the battle of the Red Bull KTMs in ninth, just ahead of his teammate Bo Benschneider. Yeah, behind them is this man, Aaron Kinnett, can't get himself in the top ten at the moment. And Fanati, second in the championship, is twelfth at this moment in time. 
championship standings on the right it doesn't really make much difference not a lot is going to change there they'll all stay in the same place but Mir would extend his lead to 86 just to make absolute sure everyone realizes how good he is it's down another tenth through sector three though yeah Martin loses a tenth Bastianini gains a tenth Bastianini has definitely got his head down here he's got into a brilliant rhythm he's stretching away from Livio Loy the gap now between Bastianini and Loy is up to almost six tenths of a second board here with Bastianini this was his race start as we head up towards turn number one just to the left of him there Nico Antonelli trying to find your line through turn one it was a pretty good job there from Anaya Bastianini it has to be said in the meantime the leaders oh a big moment there wasn't it for Gabriel Rodrigo Martin has just gone across the line and it's now under half a second the gap between Martin and Mir yeah Martin Steve last time around he dropped into the 2.14s four tenths of a second slower than Joanne Mir chasing him Bastianini is the man that's got the pace right now he's the quickest man on the circuit with a 2.13.5 Mir was really defensive wasn't he and took a real wide outside line going into the first corner he didn't really want to be getting caught up in too many shenanigans on the inside you can just see now with every meter that these guys run it gets closer and closer and Mir has a good long look over his left shoulder he will see an air Bastianini in the distance in fact Bastianini and Livio Loy they're breaking away from Norodine and Rodrigo to Gian Antonio John McPhee struggling here with a bit of rhythm he's dropped down to a 2.14.5 he's lost a place as well to Fabio the Gian Antonio so McPhee potentially running into a few grip issues here about mid-race distance rewind back to 2014 and you'll see footage of Martin and Mir fighting oh, away but here comes Mir this is unbelievable and he takes the lead there wasn't even any form of retaliation there from Juan, uh, from Jorge Martin. He couldn't get close to him through turn nine. I mean, was that a deliberate ploy from Martin to let Mir through to have a look at him, see what he's got for him? It may well have been because it looked so easy. I mean, it was effortless by Juan Mir. I can't believe that Martin was going to surrender just like that without a fight. We'll find out. But maybe Martin just thought, okay, yeah, I've seen you close that gap down on me. Let's have a look, see what you've got. Martin used to get the better of Mir on a regular basis but oh how the tables have turned Tran Mir looking here to take win number 11 in his Moto3 career Martin then in the slipstream pulls out immediately will he have another look up the inside of him into turn number 15 no he settles for second right now how long will he be able to stay with the world champion through turn 15 then for the ninth time of asking it will be Tran Mir then to lead over the line for the first time in this Malaysian Grand Prix really asking questions now big big questions of Jorge Martin over the line they come Mia still in those 2.13s he was 7 tenths of a second quicker last time around than Martin keep a close eye on Bastianini as well not a million miles off of the uh, top two Malaysian crowd getting a bit excited there as Adam Norodin fainted a move up the inside oh, of Livio Loy Tonelli's crash Steve talk about contrasting fortunes on the flyways that fantastic podium in Japan two weeks ago crashed in Australia last weekend and I'm afraid to say Antonelli is on the floor again yeah what is going on with McPhee he's got 12. major problems he's dropped at Steve he did a 2.17.7 last time around I wonder he's if there's maybe some damage from that collision with Rodrigo on the straight yeah he's just dropped down to 12th as well there's big problems here is Nico Antonelli and then a crash at turn 15 for him uh, John McPhee is I think about to pull out of this race yeah. there's something majorly wrong there you might be right Matt actually Maybe there could have been something happening unless yes. he's just made a mistake see further back here what well, I just made a mistake this is the Antonelli crash isn't it I guess Ooh. oh well that's oh, where that's why McPhee's ah, in the 270 okay. there you go McPhee's in the pit lane yeah well that would explain a few things yeah absolutely nowhere to go other than take to the grass the gravel and then the pit lane momentarily that's why John McPhee did a 217.7 he did actually an outstanding job of avoiding the Calante so Mia having hit the front has not been able to break the shackles of Jorge Martin so far and now Bastianini's closing them yeah. in this Bastianini is the man who looks really menacing Steve this is a good I've seen Bastianini ride all year it always leaves it too late though doesn't he Bastianini in the season he's gonna have to change that form next year when he slides into the slippers of Juan Mir in the Leopard Honda team onto the back straight we go Jorge Martin now got a chance to slipstream in the background there Adam Norodin is up to fourth as well he really wants these guys to all yeah. mess each other up he needs a big fight to unfold now in front of him does Adam Norodin 
by far the best ride of his career so far he should have had a top six in Mateg in those horrible wet weather conditions before he crashed out we'll keep a close eye on the gap between Norodin and Bastianini then in third place another lap clicked off for Juan Mir lap number 10 is over just under two tenths of a second clear of Martin Bastianini is coming right back into it the gap between Bastianini and Norodin exactly a second as they came over the line there is Adam Norodin in fourth place this Malaysian crowd oh, oh he's down, down. Can disaster. you believe it? Absolute disaster for the Malaysian. He gets back on board and in fact he's going to rejoin in a pretty decent position behind his teammate Aumia Sasaki in 13th place. But disaster the, for Norodin. The groans from the crowd were deafening. You could probably hear them back in Europe. That's how loud they were. Such a shame for Adam Norodin. That must, well that not mistake. Here we go. It's down into this tricky turn number one. He could sniff a podium in front of his home crowd and... Reminds me of the crash he had in Argentina when he was so far up last year. He just well to hang on to that. Just the rear came round him, didn't it? Grip. Clean angle. What he did was accept you or to make sure he kept the clutch in. Grip a real issue here for a number of riders. Here is Jorge Martin then really closing up tight now to the back of Juan Mir. He is not letting him go. Juan Mir not able to disappear. And Bastianini's now right on terms in third place. Yeah, I think this bruise that Martin let him through. Martin wanted a good look at Juan Mir just to see where his strengths and weaknesses were. Because Mir has not been able to make that crucial break. Livio Loy then, courtesy of Norodin's crash, has been left in a fairly lonely fourth place. He's quite a long way, almost two seconds off. He's teammate at the front of the race and he's got a comfortable buffer of two and a half seconds back to Rodrigo in fifth and then his mistake proved really costly for John McPhee Steve it put McPhee all the way back down in 13th place it's one thing being with Juan Mir it's another thing beating him on race day in tactic in, in tactical races like this Martin has not been successful so far this year but now he pulls out of the slipstream Mir's too late on the brakes though and too good on the brakes he won't pass him here not this time oh he's gone wide Mir's gone well wide he was late on the brakes, but he was too late on the brakes. And Bastianini's going to take the lead here. No, Martin on cutback. So Mir here, just in a bit of trouble. It's a very, very rare mistake you'll see there from the world champion, Juan Mir. So he drops back to third place. Martin then back in the lead. Bastianini second. Bastianini now has got the inside line going into turn number one. So an air Bastianini from ninth place on the grid has suddenly moved himself up into the lead. And now Bastianini looking for his first victory in over a year. Joan Mir looking for win number 11 of his career. And Jorge Martin will throw everything into this with seven laps to go. He's looking for maiden victory in the Moto3 class. Now what just happened there has given four tenths of a second to Livio Loy. He's not close enough to have an impact at the moment on this group. Aaron Connect's found a bit of pace. Finally, he's made his way up inside the top six. Largely, although completely down to Adam Norodin's mistake last time around. Norodin, poor Adam Norodin, of course, was running in that brilliant fourth place. He did remount and came over the line on that lap number 11 in 14, so it cost him 10 places, that tip off at turn one. And now Bastianini, last year's runner-up, looking to try and get himself back to winning ways giving himself some confidence going into the winter Honda's dominating once more We've seen a few times this year haven't we though and now Bastianini he can over abuse those tyres we've seen him a couple of times run out and make crucial mistakes in late races when he's been really well placed certainly remember Le Mans being a race where he looked like he was going to be on the podium and then made a bit of a hash of it so he's not to indestructible when he's at the front door fighting for the podium Juan Mir has a right good long look over his left shoulder down the back straight he would have got a face full of Jorge Martins number 88 no matter what Martin does though he just cannot get past Mir on the slipstream into turn 15 we go again tyre wear a potential issue here because the times are dropping away slightly Martin on a couple of occasions on that lap just looked like he was struggling to hold a line but I think they've all got the same problems across the line we go then six to go Bastianini, Mir and Martin all together has Martin got the slipstream up the inside of Mir he has and he's going to have that inside line 
classic block pass there from Jorge Martin. So he's back up into second place. You would not believe that Honda have only ever won once here in Sepang in Moto3. Efren Vasquez is winning 2015 because they're running riot HRC again in this Moto3 race here in Malaysia. That's a collector's item there, seeing someone passing Joan Mir on the brakes. Romano Fernati is up into sixth place now as Mir bites back immediately into fourth. But yeah, Romano Fernati is ahead of Bo Bensneider now. So a good job from the Italian considering how low he was in qualifying. On board here with Jorge Martin looking up at Juan Mir, the world champion. Out of all these three, Steve, if it comes down to a last lap showdown, which we really hope it does, you're going to have to put a fair chunk of money on Mir. No, He's yeah. the master of the last lap showdown. He's been brilliant on so many occasions of getting the better of his rivals on the final lap. His race craft, his tactics and strategy are second to none. Only twice this year has he got it wrong on a final lap. Once in Jerez and once in Assen, where tactics went horribly wrong. But for the most part, Mir is just so, so clever. This is a huge scrap going on here. Riders from 5th all the way down to, what is that, 12th, 13th place? Yeah, this is a right old dogfight. Currently being led by Fanati, who's got decent rhythm here, Fanati. Far, far too late though to get him into podium contention. Last time around, actually, Fanati was quicker than the top three. He was half a second faster than Jorge Martin. It's a credit to Adam Norodine and just how fast he's been in this Grand Prix. The fact that he's gone down and he's still on for some points just behind his teammate at the back of this group. Hayumi Sasaki keeps on looking over his shoulder. I don't know if he's run into trouble. There is Romano Fanati then. This is the battle for fifth place and this is the battle for the race win. Juan Mir then has been pushed back to third place again. Anaya Bastianini leads. Five to go when they cross the line. Bastianini leads but for how much longer can Martin get into the slipstream and retake the lead of this race? Can Mir fight up the inside of Martin as well? He's got a two-bike slipstream here, Juan Mir, but he's not able to find a way through. Bastianini also holding firm on the brakes going into that first corner. This is not the scrap, the intense scrap that Livio Loy needs. They're not really swapping places too much. So Livio Loy is still about two seconds back. This is what happened at turn 15 when we were looking at that other battle. Martin up the inside of Juan Mir. Nice move. Quality move that by Jorge Martin. Nicely done, all neat and tidy. Martin is a, a rider that will be one of the championship contenders for next year along with Bastianini, Canet, etc. But he's got to get that first win under his belt. From there on in, I think he'll fly. But he's got to get the uh, monkey off the back. Yeah, what about Bastianini? Massive pressure on him next year, having already confirmed he's joining Leopard Honda. This is the Enea Bastianini. They hope they've signed. He hasn't got a great victory average, has he? As Martin sweeps to the inside to look up the inside of Bastianini at turn nine. Bastianini has only won two of his last 37 races. That's a win rate he's going to have to up dramatically next year if he's to fight for the world title and get anywhere close to matching the performances, the outstanding performances of new world champion Juan Mir. Jorge Martin again looking at the slipstream there of Bastianini. They go through turns 12 and 13. And provided Mir doesn't overtake Martin into turn number 14. He's trying to take a sweeping line here. They're all now going to get in each other's slipstream. And Martin will try now to get tucked in and behind Enea Bastianini. They're going to be three abreast here at the end of this back straight. So can anybody make a key move on the brakes at turn number 15? Mir pops out from behind Jorge Martin. Martin then gets the slipstream and leads up the inside of Bastianini. The slipstream so crucial oh, there. Martin's wide. Bastianini went all the way back to third. Jorge Martin running it a bit wide, but then he's got it on the cut back. He got the power on slightly earlier across the line here. They are close together. Martin now leads from Mir and Bastianini fights back in third. He's got the inside line as they head down towards turn number one. Livio Loy is loving this. While this is all going on, he's just taken a tenth or two out of them. He might run out of time, but if we see more of what we've seen over the last couple of laps, Livio Loy could be in for podium contention. Yeah, he wants a bit more paint swapping here, Livio Loy, doesn't he? Because that will drag him right back into it. He's really safe and secure in that fourth place. Is Bastianini going to have a look up the inside of Martin on that run down and on breaks into turn number four? He is, and he's got that inside line. 
clinically done again by Bastianini. He looks really sharp this time out on that front end. He doesn't have any obvious rear grip problems at the moment, which has been his Achilles heel so far this year. Livio Lois it is a pricking up here. Another tenth he's taken out of them in sector one. They round here, turn number six, up towards the double right hand are coming up. Turn seven and eight. No overtaking through here unless you're really big and brave. This is a good overtaking opportunity coming up though on the exit. Get yourself tucked into the slipstream. Hairpin left coming up. Juan Mir just trying to find a way through, but Martin takes the defensive line. They stay together for now. And again, another tenth taken out of them by Livio Loy, the Belgian in fourth. Number 11, looking for back-to-back -back podiums for the first time in his career. Livio Law will be cursing the fact that he lost the slipstream, won't he? That's what's going to probably cost him. He's so light as well, Livio Law. so strong on those, the back straight and the home straight. Much, much lighter than those three riders in front of him. So if he could have got closer in the slipstream, he would have really fancied a chance of putting up a victory fight. Around turn 14 we go again. Onto the back straight again. And a, you'll see them all once more fanning out three abreast into turn number 15 martin in the slipstream of bastianini mir takes the inside line as well mir so good on the brakes is he going to try and do the lot of them no martin takes the lead and just like the last lap mir up into second place bastianini demoted to third but what these three know is exactly what the situation scenario could pan out for that final corner they've seen it now two or three laps in succession the man who's leading coming out of turn number 14 gets slipstreamed on the brakes to turn number 15 so it's going to be a crucial strategic race at the end of this Grand Prix oh that's brave Bastianini there really late on the brakes and Martin across the line in first drops down to third Mir leads once more Livio Lloyd did take only just another tenth out of that top three so he's still 1.6 seconds behind Martin right now probably going to run out of time isn't he Livio Lloyd yeah, he's just not quite able to get there, is he? Here comes Martin again, having a look up the inside of Enea Bastianini. These two need to be careful as well, because Juan Mir will happily peel off into the distance, and Bastianini's lost a big bunch of time there. A bit yep. of an error on the A. He was pushed slightly wide. It was aggressive, and it was hard by Jorge Martin. Perfectly OK, though. But Bastianini pushed off the circuit. He definitely would have had to have rolled off momentarily there. Has that cost Enea Bastianini? His chance to win for the first time since the Japanese Grand Prix in 2016. It's dropped him back into the clutches of Livio Loy. He lost about half a second in that bit of contact with Martin. Juan Mir then. Is this the time where you see the miracle Mir appearing once more? Or can Jorge Martin finally claim that victory that he's been longing for? This is the move. Neither really wanted to give way. And in the end, Martin had the inside line. And you don't win those battles. Bastianini tried to go toe to toe with Martin and he lost Nicolo Bouliga who was having a shocking ride he was 18th some real big names were struggling outside the points Ertl, Ramirez and Bouliga in fact Philip Ertl now has gone into the point scoring places those three were having a good fight normally when you say Ertl, Ramirez and Bouliga are locked together fighting you're talking about a top six Nicolo Bouliga can't wait for this season to end and there's going to be a lot of work needing to be done at the end of the year as well if he's to have any say in next season. I don't think it's his fault either, is it? That looks like he's had a mechanical. So they're all just stretching out slightly here then. Juan Mir, your race leader. Martin, and when we go across the line, we'll have two laps to try and reel in the world champion. Bastianini, just for now, looks out of it in third. Mir's testing Martin here now, Steve. He is really piling the pressure on, asking major, major questions of Martin. Mir, the mid-213 lap last time around was six tenths of a second quicker than his closest rival Martin. How much time did Bastianini lose with that mistake? He lost a second to Mir. That's how much that, when he was pushed out wide at turn number four, it cost him a second. Andrea Minio has come up from 19th on the grid to leave, lead this pack for fifth place. A good job from the Italian. He does it so often. Already six times this year from 20th or lower, he's come back into the point scoring places. Mir's checking out here, Matt. Six tenths through sector one. He's just brilliant. He's just too good for this field. I tell you what, Martin, Bastianini, Kinnett and the likes of are going to be so relieved to see the back of that number 36. Well, tyre management, we do know, is a key asset of Juan Mir. And it looks like it may have timed this assault to absolute perfection. If he's broken the slipstream, Martin's got issues. He's going to have to take some big, big risks to try and hunt down Juan Mir. And will he do so knowing that he's got a podium place there up for grabs? It's either going to have to be a brilliant lap 
from Jorge Martin or a mistake from Juan Mir for anyone to get on terms with him. He's already won more races in a single season than any other Moto3 rider. He would be one away from Valentino Rossi's record if he does this. He's already, in his first 35 Grand Prix, got better records at this stage than the likes of Marc Marquez, Maverick Vinales, Danny Pedrosa, Casey Stoner. Martin's just taken half a tenth. It's not a lot, but it's still a glimmer of hope for the Spanish man in second place. Mia sweeps down, nail through in this turn number 13. Martin is not going to be close enough though, he badly needs the slipstream to drag him up into a chance of an overtake at that final corner but he's nowhere near close enough and Juan Mir can't imagine he's going to give Martin a sniff at this stage of the race with that comfortable advantage. Martin himself just trying to break the slipstream of an Bastian in, he doesn't want to have a fifth podium in a row being a third place. We're about to start the final lap of the race. This is the uh, scrap still going on for fifth place, but Juan Mir here, so we just see confirmation on our screens that Dalla Porta has gone down. Juan Mir is just a lap away, 5.5K away from taking yet another stunning victory. So many questions have been asked of him this year, and he has answered all of them with a knockout blow. Well, Martin's got his hands full here just to hold him to second place because Bastianini is really piling on the pressure. If these two start fighting it out for second place, well, Duran Mir, you can hand him the trophy now because you can't see him normally blowing this kind of an advantage. He's absolutely normally mentally bulletproof, isn't he? Certainly in these kind of last lap scenarios, Duran Mir. Up into turn number four, his advantage through sector one, just shy of six and a half tenths. So Bastianini is going to be close enough here to begin the Martin slipstream down that back straight. And he'll have a look, he might have a look even early, he might be lining up a move here at turn number nine and there Bastianini. He seems to be carrying much more corner speed through turn six and seven than Jorge Martin. Just wonder whether Martin's just running out of edge grip here a little bit. Yeah, his front end is moving around quite a bit, Jorge Martin. He's desperate to try and get closer to Mir, but there's no mistake coming from the world champion. And here comes Bastianini, right on cue, up the inside. Well, he's gone for it. I'm a little bit surprised because he's now giving Martin the chance to slipstream him up the back straight. I thought Bastianini may wait. His goal, obviously, he still thinks he can win. He's trying to get in front of Martin to uh, give me a bit of a headache. I don't think he's going to be able to bridge the gap though. It's still just under six tenths of a second. Bastian in his challenge here might have just come a little bit too late. He was in wide there as well coming through turn number 12. Here we go then, final sector around turn 14. Juan Mir just a couple of corners away and now one corner away from taking another win. Who gets second though? Will it be Bastianini? Will it be Martini's in the slipstream? Yeah, Martin has got the slipstream. I don't think he's going to be close enough though. Bastianini weaving across the circuit, trying to break the slipstream. A late lunch here coming from Jorge Martin. There's no doubt about your winner. Martin's got that inside line. Will Bastianini do him on the cutback? Juan Mir's going to win the Malaysian Grand Prix, though. Pole jinx over. Champion wins. He's done it again. Ten wins in a season for the champion. Across the line, Martin gets second. Just ahead of Bastianini. It's another great result for Livio Loy. He takes fourth. McPhee here has done very well to climb through after the earlier errors that went on. He takes fifth ahead of Minio, Fanati, Kinnett, the Gian Antonio, Ben Snyder and Adam Norodin. 11th despite falling but Juan Mir has done it again he is absolutely flawless he's got everything there is no one that can touch him unbelievable Matt I, uh, what more can we say about this guy he is now one victory away from equal equaling Valentino's record of most wins in a season what makes me chuckle as well that almost a muted celebration from the Leopard racing team as if they kind of expected him to win that great job as well by Livio Lloyd somebody give that young man a contract for 2018 the way he's been riding of late second last weekend in Phillip Island fourth here today as you said it's a cracking recovery by John McPhee as well that mistake when he had to run off but after Nicolo Antelli crashed in front of him dropped him back to 14th place stunning fight back to fifth for McPhee but this man has been absolutely untouchable yet again already getting the leathers loose and he's going to be absolutely baking hot excruciating temperatures out there today physically demanding look has a big squint he's probably got sweat pouring into his eyes Moto2 next year watch out that's all I can say the wildcard Kazmi Yudin unfortunately crashed out on the last lap of the race 
what more can Jorge Martin do other than just look forward to the day that Juan Mir clears off ninth podium for him in his 49th race but Mir just constantly the thorn in his side this season the good news for Jorge Martin that really helps him out in terms of uh, finishing as high up in the championship as possible this is the last lap um, the move I think this is where Juan Mir made his move no not quite sure what this is this wasn't the last lap definitely that was though across the line and once again this year three Hondas locking out the podium what can you say about Juan Mir cool calm and calculating as ever everybody thought the pressure was building on him when he didn't score points for the first time this year at the twin room Matagi they thought well Fanati's win 55 points the gap that's really good to see as well isn't it the Kiefer racing team coming in to celebrate of course they were in alliance a couple of years ago Moto3 with Kiefer racing we were the Leopard team when Danny Kemp won the world championship of course it's been a tragic weekend for Kiefer racing with the sad loss of team manager and figurehead Stefan Kiefer who sadly passed away this weekend here in Malaysia that actually may well go to explaining some of the the muted celebrations from the at the Leopard Honda team and I and I Bastianini is back on the podium again first podium since Aragon and in terms of the championship that helps him out in sixth and he's just got a slight hope if things were to go really his way any more look at that on the right that's what you call domination that is what you call domination we thought Brad Binder had dominated last year's championship with seven wins so Juan Mir will end this year triumphant in more than half of the 18 races we've had or we will have had by the time we get to the chequered flag in Valencia in two weeks time and that graphic could extend all the way down to 1997 and you still wouldn't see anyone better other than Valentino Rossi Jorge Martin here as ever Matt he's in Parc Ferme without a massive smile on his face and for good reason he yeah. had one thing on his mind today again contemplating what might have been Jorge Martin he looks absolutely drained doesn't he I think he had a bit of front-end chatter that was what was costing him Romano Fanati is seventh place so what we do know now as well is that Romano Fanati has secured second place as we expected behind this man Juan Mir in the World Championship he's won almost a third and pretty much a third of all of the races he's entered this guy yeah he's a different class this year different class there's been nobody to lay a glove on him he's been in a complete league of his own you know, we're talking about dominations of a lightweight world championship we haven't seen the likes of for 20 years this is once in a generation domination by this young man if ever there was a moment where a rookie going into an intermediate class could be considered an actual danger to win a Moto2 class it's not it looked likely at all in recent years but you wouldn't put it past Juan Mir I tell you what he's had to work hard for it he looks absolutely shattered doesn't he Juan Mir pours a cool bottle of water straight over his head he's confirmed as the runner-up Romano Fanati with that result second place in the championship done and dusted the yep. same cannot be said for Aaron Kinnett he's not quite done that yet third overall with Martin finishing on the podium Kinnett finished down in eighth still no podium finish here then for Romano Fanati in his five appearances Aaron Kinnett eighth place not really what he came for in Malaysia disappointing result for the Spanish rider he was almost 12 seconds behind your race winner there's an Abbas Giannini then I have to say Aaron Kinnett if he is to truly be considered as a, a championship rival for 2018 he's going to need to up the ante a bit it's no podium now since Silverstone for Aaron Kinnett here is Inaya Bastianini, there is teammate, back on the podium for the first time since Aragon. He's with Dylan. Well, Inaya, congratulations. Third place here in Sepang. Now, you made your winning move at turn, uh, you made your move at turn number nine, but were you expecting Jorge to come up on the inside in the last corner? Yeah, I'm happy for today because uh, it's so hard, this race. And uh, finally, this morning, uh, Mir and uh, Martin was a better pace, respect me. But uh, today I have, uh, I have uh, battled with uh, all my energy 
and uh, I have uh, recovered him and uh, nothing. I'm, I'm happy a lot, but uh, finally it's impossible to win. I have tried, but uh, nothing. I, I try in, in Valencia. Okay, thanks a lot, Enea. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, good job by Enea uh, Bastini. Kind of knew he was setting himself up for this move from Jorge Martin. Bastianini attacked at turn number nine. Still hopeful that he can maybe reel in your eventual race leader, Joan Mir. But it was a tactics that went wrong. Martin was able to use the slipstream and hold on to the finish line. There is Joan Mir for the tenth time celebrating a win this season. We'll shortly be hearing from, I'm sure, a very deliriously happy world champion. He took the checker flag seven tenths of a second over Jorge Martin with Bastianini pipped to third by just three hundredths of a second. Bastianini was the fastest man on that last lap as Joan Mir can start the celebration. Again, though we can hear from him, the race winner, the world champion, he's been dominant again. Joan Mir is talking to Dylan. Well, Joan, congratulations. You have celebrated your world championship with win number 10 here in Malaysia. You were close there with Jorge for a while, but the last two laps you pulled out a lead. Did you know you had that little bit extra? Yes, uh, at the beginning Jorge uh, pushed so hard and it was difficult for me to follow him. But uh, time by time, uh, the, the, um, the tires going used and used and used. And my, my pace uh, with used tire was a little bit better. No? And uh, well, when I, when I was uh, in the group there, only managed uh, to do uh, three, the last three laps uh, as best as I can. And well, this is the best way to celebrate the title. Thank you. Excellent drama. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely the best way to celebrate the title. He celebrated it last week, being crowned the world champion with a victory in a short and Phillip Island race. Yeah, summed it up perfectly. He just felt like he had the better pace on those used tyres for those crucial three or four laps. Stunning performance again from Juan Mir. We're going to hear from Jorge Martin very shortly, reflecting on another perhaps missed opportunity. He will feel an electrifying start built up a lead of almost two seconds and here he is now talking to Dylan after yet another podium finish well Jorge congratulations what a fantastic move into the final corner to take second place we thought maybe you were going to win at the start but did you maybe just burn up your tire a little bit too much yeah uh, at the beginning of the of the day in the warm-up I felt really good so I tried to to put all my all my cards on the table and I put so hard but I finished the the rear the rear uh, tire and at the end it was really really difficult I tried even though to manage uh, the lap for the last laps but Mir had a bit more and, and yeah uh, he deserved it I'm really really happy for the second position thank you very much Jorge congratulations yeah congratulations Jorge Martin put all his cards on the table but yet again he was trumped by Juan Mir wasn't he brilliant stuff late on by Mir those last three laps when he knew the tyres were going away he has not had to work any harder though for a race win this year of all those 10 wins in these really punishing conditions Juan Mir looks absolutely drained but well, you're not surprised these conditions are the biggest challenge to any rider I have to say fair play to Livio Loy when the chips are down in a situation like what's happened to him he completely unaware until he got to the flyaways that he was without a ride for next year credit to Livio Loy and his character Matt oh he's riding under immense pressure he's riding for his Grand Prix future he doesn't want to be sitting at home watching these races next year from his sofa in Belgium so under that kind of pressure when you're fighting for a ride Livio Loy has done an absolutely outstanding sequence of results on these flyaway races. that brilliant podium last time out in Australia of course he would have had a couple of back-to-back -back top sixes before that injury in Mizano a few weeks ago so it's been a real strong second half of the year for Livio Loy you He's just right. wonder whether at the back of their mind Steve Leopard Honda might just have a, a tinge of regret at uh, releasing him I'd be shocked if they didn't they wouldn't be human if they didn't uh, uh, it's at this moment in time based on form it's the wrong decision now, who are we to say we just talk about the races Lorenzo Della Porta could shock us all next year but based on current I mean talking of Lorenzo Della Porta it was obviously a moment for him just knocking into Kazmayudin and he's about to go down or is this just an incident that they're investigating perhaps and again here from Della Porta involved they, they both did crash late on didn't they and I would imagine there you go that's the reason why Oh, dear me, Della Porta. Oh, blimey. Surfing on the tank. That's not going to work out, and it didn't work out. So they'd had a couple of bits of contact, Della Porta and Kazmi Yadin. And Kazmi Yadin actually did make it round to the final corner on that final lap before 
he tipped off himself so that's what I think you call a fairly eventful final couple of laps for the home race wildcard is pretty upset with himself he would love to of course have finished in front of an enthusiastic passionate and very large home crowd here in Malaysia quick word on some of the other four uh, finishers Pagliani 15th a point for him again on the COP Mahindra don't know what happened to RBA Racing KTM Matt 14th and uh, 13th respectively that is not good enough for Matthew Casey's boys yeah Rodrigo was in the podium fight at the start of the race wasn't it and Nora Dean having crashed out of what fifth position ends up finishing in 11th that's a great job from the Malaysian yeah and he got back ahead of his teammate Ayuma Sasaki which will probably smart a little bit so the crowd wait patiently everybody desperately trying to keep themselves cool with some uh, fans supplied by the event sponsors it is sweltering out there right now as we await the podium celebrations for the Moto3 riders here's the beast the beast doing the business in the far east and there Bastianini good job for him just uh, taking the congratulations of the local circuit organizers they are part under about to take their 10th constructor trophy of the year another dominant performance by Honda as well Bastianini comes to the podium then so as does Jorge Martin still not that middle step he so desperately craves because this man has pretty much had his footprints marked in that top step of the podium this year Juan Mir climbs to the top step of the podium for the 10th time this season the 11th is gone for his career team trophy then being presented by uh, Troy Chapman from uh, Shell sponsors of this Malaysian Grand Prix another one for the expanding Leopard Honda trophy cabinet third place then for Nea Bastianini still over a year since he took that last win in Japan but it's his 18th career podium for the man from Rimini Jorge Martin about to take second place the trophy for him that's going to be his ninth podium finish still awaits that first victory and the reason why he's been denied again is the sheer brilliance of your new world champion crowned last weekend at Phillip Island in Australia Juan Mir his 10th win of the season he's on the brink of equaling Valentino Rossi's incredible record in the lightweight world championship 11 wins 20 years ago in 1997 Mir the man in Malaysia First pole position of the season for Juan Mir. We were wondering if that might change things up in terms of results and performance, but no, it's the same result again. Nine wins now for Juan Mir. Ten wins after this one alongside Jorge Martina and Enia Bastianini on the podium. That Leopard Honda team, wow. They're going to be very sad to let him go, aren't they, Matthew? Yes, uh, well, uh, sad uh, not really because uh, he won this year and there is no reason for him to stay in Moto3. So uh, next year they get uh, Bastianini and Bastianini is on the podium today. He's a very strong rider, so I think that they can fight for the title with him. Mir is moving up and it's good for him to move up and for us also. So we will see him uh, fighting with, uh, in a different class next year. will be very hard the first year, but uh, I know he has a lot of talent and then we'll be able to, for sure, to get on the podium. And uh, who knows, the following year to be world champion again. Yeah, we shall see. So confirmation of the results in your Moto3 race at Sepang. John Mir ahead of Jorge Martin and Enia Bastianini. Livio Loy 
trying to keep up with that leading pack, just couldn't have to settle for fourth. John McPhee, a great move up the timesheets for him after going through the grass a little bit earlier on in the session. Andrea Minio, another man who climbed right up from way back on the grid in sixth, ahead of Fanati, Aaron Canet, Fabio De Giantonio, Bo Ben Snyder, local hero Adam Norridin rescuing an 11th place finish, and Ayumu Sasaki there in 12th. All right, we're going to go for a short break, after which we will reflect on that man in your picture, Juan Mir, dominant yet again, and we will start to build up to Moto2 at Malaysia. The races are coming thick and fast in Sepang. Stay with us here on the Fox Sports Network. Racing and as well as that, he gets the start, it's morning to get into the roof. Here is Shikhan the Cogna, head of Gary Zakaria. FIM Asia Super Moto Championship 2017 highlights on Fox Sports 2. There's no stopping Juan Mir this season, is there? Another 25 points for him moves him on to 321 points. Of course, he is already crowned a world champion. Romano Fanati there in second, Aaron Canet in third, and Jorge Martin picking up a very decent podium for him there. A second place for Martin. He's in fourth in the championship in 171. The G 